If you have any prayer requests that you would like to lift up, you can do that on that online form or by grabbing one of the prayer request cards. Um, then you'll also find a few back in front of you. You can place those in the offering plate as well during that time as it's being passed. We have some really fun things happening uh, here in the church in the, the next few weeks. Uh, and uh, one of those things is that next week starts the season of Advent, uh, where we spend time preparing for the coming Christ child and the coming kingdom of God. So to tell us a little bit about what we're going to be doing during that time, I'm going to invite Lindsay to come up.
You'll forgive me one day, right? Okay, good, good. Uh, we also have some exciting things happening in our family ministry, so I'm going to invite Jordan to come up as well and tell us a little bit about that. It's now her birthday. It's not my birthday, but it is my mother's birthday. So it's a special day. <laughs> Good morning. So as you may notice, we still have our care packages in the lobby. Those are going to our college students and our young adults that have graduated as they are coming into the time of finals or um, some time of preparing for Christmas. Um, we want to make sure that they know that they have a church family that is with them and that is for them. So today will be the last day we're going to mail those off this week. So if you have any goodies you want to drop off, you can drop them off right back there. Um, and we also have in the lobby cards that you can sign that we're going to be putting in those uh, boxes as well. So as you leave today, please make sure to sign our cards so that those students and young adults know that we love them and are still thinking about them. Now, it's gingerbread time. December 3rd, Gingerbread Jingle Jam, 5 to 7.30 in the lobby and in the fellowship hall. You can register to get a gingerbread stable um, for your family online, and that's on our Facebook, our email blast, and on our website. We also need some help. We need some elves to help us bake the gingerbread. So if you're a baker and you would like to help, uh, reach out to Courtney or myself, and we'll make you the recipe and the cookie cutters for those. So it's going to be a great time. It's December 3rd from 5 to 7.30. Thank you, Jordan. Just a reminder, we will be doing Kids Church uh, today, so after the opening prayer here in a moment, we'll invite any kids who want to to go in the back with Miss Courtney and all of her uh, wonderful elves or minions, depending on uh, who they are for that Sunday. You'll go to the Fellowship Hall just across from the Narthex. Um, you'll hang out and, and have some fun in there, and then parents, you can pick up the, the kids either after the service or any time during the service that you would need to. That'll happen immediately after our opening prayer. We do have one final announcement, and uh, it's a, uh, I'm just going to call it bitter. Um, it's not sweet at all. This is Colin's last Sunday with us. Aww. And, yeah. Yeah. None of us are happy about that. Um, but, um, Colin, thank you so much for, for helping lead us and for uh, helping uh, bring us to the, the, the throne in worship. Um, your, your presence here has been a gift. Um, your, your voice is um, like that of an angel's. Um, and we have been absolutely lucky to have you during this time. So thank you so much for being a part of us. With these announcements being made, let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, we thank you for this time of worship. We thank you that you are here with us, and that during this time, we get to not only lift our voices in praise to you, God, we get to hear from you. Lord, open our ears, open our hearts, that, that we would hear your word for us today, that we would take it to heart, and God, that it would change us, that as we go out into the world after our service is over, God, we would engage in service at that point, bringing your kingdom to this place. May our worship bring you joy. May it be the gift we give to the God who has given us everything. And may you be blessed by it today. All this we ask and we pray in your name. Amen. Please stand as we uh, re begin to sing. And any kids who want to go to Kids Church with Miss Courtney, you can head to the back now.
Amen.
I'm not good enough. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius. 
Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And will there, from, from there will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
you would please let us pray together. Holy God, as we prepare to hear now from your word, God, open our ears a little bit wider. That experiencing your living word, God, we would be changed by it. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning as we finish up our series on Galatians comes from Galatians chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. Hear now these words of the Apostle Paul. Those who are taught the word should share all good things with their teacher. Make no mistake, God is not mocked. A person will harvest what they plant. Those who plant only for their own benefit the harvest of devastation from their selfishness. But those who plant for the benefit of the Spirit will harvest eternal life from the Spirit. Let's not get tired of doing good, because in time we'll have a harvest if we don't give up. So then let's work for the good of all whenever we have the opportunity, especially for those in the household of faith. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, growing up as a military brat, I had the wonderful blessing of getting to live in some really fun places. One of the first was when I was four, we moved to the, the island of Guam. Now, I don't know how many of you know about that little uh, island in the, the west part of the Pacific, uh, but Guam is, is tiny. Guam is about a third the size of Hayes County. <laughs> and one of the things that we would do for fun is just drive all the way around the island because that was something that we could do in an afternoon with stops. It was great. We loved being there, especially going from San Antonio and, you know, I mean, y'all know that summers here are kind of awful, right? To, to Guam, where it was a tropical paradise. Guam has two uh, types of topography on it. Beaches and what they call boonies. It was the jungle, the wilderness of Guam, and uh, the, the really cool thing about Guam is to get to some of those best beaches, you had to go through the boonies. You had to go on these amazing hikes through um, this untouched wilderness, and uh, the, the locals there, uh, I, I love the name that they had for those, those hikes through the boonies. They called it Boonie Stompin'. And so we would park up on, um, you know, wherever the actual paved road was, and then we would, as a family, booty stomp from that point down to some of the most beautiful and pristine beaches I've ever seen. And what an experience it was. The one thing about this, though, is you had to pack everything you were going to bring. And it stomps down and back up with you, right? So any towels, any chairs, any coolers, anything that you needed for a day at the beach, you had to be able to carry down with you. And my parents didn't want to have to make more than one trip. And so even my four-year-old self and my two-year-old brother, we had things that on our boonie stomp we had to carry down. It wasn't a lot. It was like a bag full of towels, or, you know, a folding chair. They're not loading down tiny little kids and then making them hike through the woods. They're just giving us something so that we could contribute to it. And I can remember, as a four-year-old, going on these boonie stops and trying to get down as fast as possible without a care for those who were with me, those who uh, might be, you know, going down ahead of us without a care for the things that I'm supposed to be carrying or, you know, helping out. All I wanted to do was make sure that I got to the beach as fast as possible. Meanwhile, here's my dad, loaded down with everything that we would need for the day. 
Somehow he managed to, to take a bungee cord and, and wrap all of the folding chairs around his back and hold the bungee cord while he's also holding a cooler. And I mean, I, I swear he had to have six arms to get this done. Because while I was so focused on making sure that I got what I wanted down to the beach as soon as possible, my dad was making sure that we all had the absolute best time we could. He was thinking about all of us. I was thinking about myself. This is the sixth week in our, our series on Galatians, our, our last week in the series. And today we hear Paul reiterate what he has reiterated over and over and over again in this letter. That it's not about us. But it's about what God has done for us. As he finishes off his letter to the church in Galatia, Paul says, Stop focusing on your ownness, on your oneness, and focus instead on the prize that is so much bigger than just one person. Stop making it about you at all, because the truth was that it was never about you. For what Paul wants the Galatians to in the midst of those who are coming in and saying that you have to earn your salvation through righteous works, you have to earn your place in the church by following all of the, the laws that came before, and by being circumcised, and by living into what it means to first be a Jew and then be a Christian, as, 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 as Paul is dealing with the, the church hearing all of these conflicting uh, messages, what Paul wants them to hear over and over and over again is it's not about you and what you do. But it's about the people of God and what God has done for all. You see, Paul, Paul knew a secret that many at this time in the church forgot. And, and you know, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is a, a secret that we constantly forget that we know. And that's that the law that thing given by God so long ago to the people of God, it was never about individual salvation. It was never about distinguishing the righteous from the unrighteous, and it was never about making sure you knew how not to go to hell. It was always so much more than that. Paul knew that God gave the law to set the of God as a whole, apart from the rest of the world. Not to distinguish them as righteous and everyone else is not, but to bless them so that they might go and bless the world. The people of God were meant to be that epicenter of, uh, of a rock being thrown into a, a crystal clear pond. They're the first ones that feel that ripple effect, but it doesn't stop there. It continues to spread throughout the water, affecting the entire surface of it. So that everyone receives and is blessed by what God does through this people. They were given a law to prove their blessedness so that they might bless the world. And the law with its immaculate detail at times and, and wide sweeping proclamations and other things. It was never about individual people at all. It was always about the community. It was always about the larger understanding of creation and who God was to God's people. So when Paul speaks of this message of grace, and community, Paul isn't saying anything new. Paul is asking them, urging them, to reform on what God has been doing through God's people from the very beginning. He's asking them to reform on God's original intent for God's people. The only difference is now, they have Jesus Christ who has paved the way for them. Paul is asking them as he speaks of grace and community 
to answer a question that I don't think any of us like to answer at times. And it's the question that my namesake asks in the very beginning of the Bible of, am I my sibling's keeper? Because for Paul, for the people who follow Jesus Christ, the answer is always yes. The answer is always it's not about me, but it's about us. And all of us experiencing what God is doing in the world. The problem is it's really easy when we start asking what do we do to make sure that we're taken care of? What do I need to do to make sure that I am righteous enough? What do we as a people need to do to emphasize personal holiness enough? When we start asking these questions, we lose that beautiful intent that God had from the very beginning. We forget that original intent of God's will to focus on all instead of focusing on the self. But friends, the gospel was never about the self. It was never meant to be about the self. Here Paul's words again in chapter 6, verse 8 of Galatians. Those who plant only for their own benefit will harvest devastation from their selfishness. But those who plant for the benefit of the Spirit will harvest eternal life from the Spirit. Those who plant hoping to make sure that they are the ones who are, are pushed ahead, that they are the ones who are seen as righteous and holy, they will reap devastation because of their selfishness. But those who plant for the Spirit the spirit that we heard last week that produces within us the fruit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The spirit that causes us to live in such a way that changes the very world around us. Those who plant in the name of that spirit, their lives are changed forever. And the world is changed through them. Friends, we've spent six weeks in Galatians now. We've covered a lot of overarching topics over those last weeks, like how we're called to no longer be silent about injustices and the twisting of the gospel truth in the world. How we're no longer under a law that condemns us all as wanting. How we're no longer divided into us and them groups, but instead it is all about what God has done for the whole. How we're no longer slaves to sin, but we are free in the name of Jesus Christ. And how we're no longer stifled by a law that over and over again is distorted by time and by people. And now we hear Paul end with this message. Taking everything that he has said and, and wrapping it in this bow of in Christ. We're no longer selfish. And we're no longer able to be so. We're no longer able to, to see and think about what we do as being for our own benefit, for our own journey, because that was never God's intent for us. And that's not what we're called to be and to do as Christ's people. Instead, we're called to reform on the gospel truth that it's about all of us together, all working together to see the kingdom come all focused on spreading the love and grace of God to the entire world, all intent on seeing everyone make it to the beach and have a great day. So may we hear Paul's words for us today and take them to heart. May we put our own needs and desires second to those of the other, knowing that the fellowship of Christ, the, the people of Christ will bear our needs when we don't bear them ourselves. May we focus on the community and on bearing Christ's light to the world. And may we be no longer self-focused. Because friends, it was never about itself at all. Amen. <coughs> our choir comes up to 
Lead us in our final song. Let us pray. God, we thank you that your grace is wide sweeping enough to encompass more than just us, more than just me as an individual, more than just anyone as an individual, that it's not about, nor has it ever been about our righteousness or what we do as individuals. But God, it's always been about you. Help us to plant a harvest that's not in our own uh, our, our, our own desire, our, our own benefit, but God, that is for you. That is based on your spirit and what your spirit is doing in the world. That we might reap the joy and glory of seeing your kingdom sprout up around us. May we no longer be self-focused. May we instead focus on what you are doing in the world. Amen. Let us stand and sing. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace.